So how do we analyze the running time of the merge sort algorithm? Well, the issue here is we can't just use our normal techniques because we have recursion going on here. We have methods calling themselves and getting smaller problems. So in order to analyze a recursive algorithm, we have to use what's called a recurrence relation. Now, instead of giving a, a formal definition, I'm going to use uh, the merge sort algorithm as an example of a recurrence relation. So what we're going to do is we're going to let Tn or T of n be the time it would take to run the algorithm with n elements. This isn't anything out in the ordinary from our normal definition of a running time. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at two different values. We're going to look at T of n where n is 1, so that's T of 1, and then we're going to look at T of n. And here T of n is going to be based on the running time of a smaller size of the input. So normally T of n is some function of n, and this is still true, but this is actually going to be a function of T of n. So what we're going to do is we'll say, first of all, if n is 1, well, the time to do merge sort is constant because we just have a single element in the array and we just say it's already sorted. So what we're going to say here is T of 1 is just 1. We're just going to note this by 1. Now, how do we merge sort n numbers? Well, what happens is we take two pieces of the array, each of size n over 2, and we do two recursive merge sorts on those arrays. So we have the time to do those two merge sorts plus the time to merge, which we've already determined is linear time to merge the two sorted arrays into the final array. What this means is T of n is actually going to be 2 times T of n over 2 plus n. All right, so we're going to use a recurrence relation. So the question is, how do we actually solve that recurrence relation? So we saw that t of n is 2t of n over 2 plus n, but we still have to solve that formula. But one approach we're going to use, or we could use, and we'll talk a little bit about, is called telescoping a sum. So let me show you an example of how we would do this. Let's say we divide our recurrence relation by n. So what we basically have here is t of n over n equals t of n over 2 divided by n over 2. And the plus 1 part is, well, we had plus n, and n divided by n is 1. Okay, so all we did is just we took our recurrence relation divided by n. Now, this is actually valid for any n that is a power of 2. What does that mean? Well, we can write t of n over 2 divided by n over 2 as t of n over 4 divided by n over 4 plus 1. So we're allowed to do that. But we can also express t of n over 4 divided by n over 4 as t of n over 8 divided by n over 8 plus 1. And we can just repeat this all the way to t of 2 over 2, which is t of 1 over 1 plus 1. Now let's just suppose we decide to add up all the equations. Now what I mean by that is we'll take all of the terms that were on the left side of each equation and we add all them up. And then we take all the terms on the right side of all the equations and we add all them up. What we would get is something like this. Now, I know this seems really long, but just look at what we have here. On the left side of the equal sign, we have everything that was on the left side of all of the equations. So t of n over n, t of n over 2 over n over 2, and so forth. What we have on the right side is the sum of all of the terms that are on the right side of all those equations. Now, you might be asking, well, what about that log n at the end? How did you get that? Well, remember, in every single one of those equations, there was always a plus 1 at the end. Well, what we find is since we're taking our equation and basically dividing it by 2 each time, we have log n of all these equations. So if we add 1 and 1 with all those uh, equations, it comes out to log n. There are log n of those. So th the sum of all those 1s is just log of n. So that's how we get that log n at the end. Now, here's the key observation with this. Notice that t of n over 2 divided by n over 2 is on both sides of the equation. So we see that we have 1 over here, and we have 1 over here. And what this means is, well, these two just cancel each other out. In fact, most of these terms are on both sides of the equation. So we see we have t of n over 4 divided by n over 4, and then we also have t of n over 8 divided by uh, n over 8, and so forth. So all these terms cancel each other out. 
So if we cancel all of these terms that are on both sides, what we end up getting is just t of n over n equals t of 1 over 1 plus log n. So now we can solve for t of n. So all we got to do here is just multiply both sides by n. And what we get is t of n is just n times t of 1 plus n log n. And we've already mentioned that t of 1 is just 1. So that means we have n plus n log n. Therefore, the running time of this algorithm, or t of n, is going to be O of n log n. So we've just established that the merge sort algorithm takes O of n log n time, which is great. But with that said, there is a problem with it. And this is a pretty significant problem with the algorithm. We're merging two sorted lists and we're storing it into a third array. Doing that merging uses extra memory. Specifically, it takes linear extra memory. And what that means is there's all this extra work for copying stuff into the array and then copying stuff back into the splitted split arrays. And that does slow down the algorithm. Those are constant time operations, but when you actually implement and run the algorithm, that takes extra time that's it really shouldn't be be used. Now there are some tricks that we can do to help with this. Um, we can do some switching between the A and temp um, arrays at alternate levels of the recursion, uh, but it gets a little tricky. But if you if you do the calling correctly, you can cut it down a little bit. And there is a variant of the merge sort algorithm that can be implemented without using recursion or non-recursively. It's just as we mentioned before, if you don't want to use recursion, you have to make sure you handle your while loop correctly. So it can be done, but it's very tricky to pull off.